Welcome to Stoic in Your Life. Today, we embark on a thought-provoking journey, exploring a topic that might initially seem counterintuitive in our pleasure-seeking society. Is it not the very pursuit of pleasure that leads to the greatest unhappiness? This question posed by the Stoic philosopher Seneca sets the stage for our discussion today. Reasons not to have sex. Stoicism. In a world where the narrative often glorifies physical intimacy as a cornerstone of happiness, we find ourselves at a crossroads. The increasing visibility of sexuality and eroticism in our age stands in stark contrast to the declining frequency of sexual encounters, particularly among young men. This paradox raises a profound question. If sex is so highly valued and deemed essential, what does it mean that many are experiencing less of it? Are we, as a society, missing out on something crucial? Or is there a deeper wisdom in abstaining from what is often labeled as the pleasure of all pleasures? Our journey today is not about casting judgment or diminishing the value of lovemaking. Instead, we aim to explore, with an open mind and a stoic perspective, the potential benefits and reasons for choosing a path less traveled, a life with less or no sexual engagement. Join me as we unravel this intriguing topic, challenging our preconceptions and discovering how ancient Stoic principles can offer a fresh lens through which to view this aspect of our lives. Enhanced Focus and Productivity In today's fast-paced world where distractions abound, the ancient philosophy of Stoicism offers a unique perspective on the benefits of abstaining from sexual activities, particularly for men aged 30 to 65 who are on a journey of self-improvement and personal growth. This concept, deeply rooted in both historical and modern contexts, revolves around the idea that sexual abstinence can lead to heightened focus and productivity. The Stoics believed in mastering one's desires and emotions to live a virtuous and meaningful life. As the famous Stoic philosopher Seneca once said, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. This quote resonates profoundly with the topic at hand, as it suggests that our pursuit of sexual pleasure, often a product of our imagination and desires, can lead us away from our true goals and aspirations. The rationale behind this Stoic approach is multifaceted. Sexual activities, while a natural and enjoyable part of human experience, can also be incredibly consuming, both physically and mentally. The pursuit of sexual gratification often requires a significant investment of time and emotional energy, which can be particularly distracting for individuals striving to achieve demanding goals in their careers, artistic endeavors, or personal development. By choosing celibacy or at least a more disciplined approach to sexuality, one can redirect the energy typically spent on seeking and engaging in sexual activities towards more productive and fulfilling pursuits. This redirection of energy can foster a more focused and disciplined lifestyle, where personal and professional ambitions take precedence. It's about prioritizing long-term fulfillment over short-term gratification, a principle that is increasingly relevant in our modern, distraction-filled world. Historically, many successful individuals across various fields have attributed part of their success to a celibate lifestyle, or at least to a disciplined approach to sexuality. They observed that by reducing the distractions and emotional turbulence often associated with an active sex life, they were able to devote themselves more fully to their work and passions. This isn't to say that sexual activity is inherently bad or distracting for everyone. But for those who choose this path, especially men in their prime years of 30 to 65, the benefits in terms of focus and productivity can be significant. Incorporating this stoic philosophy into modern life, it becomes clear that choosing celibacy or a disciplined approach to sexuality can be a powerful way to minimize external noise and focus on what truly matters. It's about understanding and mastering one's desires not being enslaved by them. This approach can lead to a more purposeful and fulfilling life, where one's true potential can be realized without the constant distraction of sexual pursuits. In conclusion, for men aged 30 to 65 who are learning about Stoicism, 
and seeking to enhance their focus and productivity. Considering a stoic approach to sexuality can be immensely beneficial. It's a path that encourages self-discipline, clarity of purpose, and a deeper understanding of what it means to live a meaningful life. Physical Health Benefits While the physical health risks associated with sexual activity, such as sexually transmitted infections, STIs, and unintended pregnancies are well known, there are also potential physical health benefits to celibacy that are often overlooked. For instance, abstaining from sexual activity eliminates the risk of contracting STIs, which can have serious long-term health consequences. Additionally, for women, celibacy removes the risk of unintended pregnancies, which can have significant physical, emotional, and financial implications. Beyond these direct health benefits, celibacy can also lead to a healthier lifestyle. Overall, Individuals who choose celibacy often report having more time and energy to invest in their physical health, engaging in activities like exercise, meditation, and healthy eating. This can lead to improvements in physical fitness, mental well-being, and overall quality of life. Moreover, the discipline and self-control developed through maintaining a celibate lifestyle can have positive ripple effects in other areas of health and wellness. The same discipline used to abstain from sexual activity can be applied to other health-related habits such as maintaining a balanced diet, adhering to a regular exercise routine, and avoiding harmful substances. In summary, while the decision to abstain from sexual activity is a personal one and may not be suitable for everyone, there are several compelling reasons to consider this lifestyle. From enhanced focus and productivity to emotional independence, self-reliance, and physical health benefits, celibacy can offer a range of advantages for those who choose to embrace it. A different, more expansive life. The reasons not to engage in sexual activities, while seemingly counterintuitive to many, opens the door to a different, more expansive life experience, as evidenced by personal accounts from those who have chosen celibacy. Consider the story of Mary Talbot, a lay practitioner, whose insights were shared in the Buddhist magazine Tricycle. Talbot's journey into celibacy, driven by inspiration from monks, nuns, and the Buddha's teachings, reveals a profound transformation. She discovered that by setting aside the pursuit of sex and romance, she unlocked a vast mental space previously occupied by thoughts, strategies, regrets, and agonies related to these pursuits. Talbot's experience echoes the Buddha's promise. While celibacy might seem like a drastic reduction from an external viewpoint, it actually leads to an exponential expansion of one's inner life. This resonates deeply with the Stoic philosophy, where the focus is on internal growth and self-mastery. The choice to remove sex and romance from one's life does indeed lessen engagement with the external world. However, this is not a loss, but an opportunity for the inner world to flourish. Ajahn Yanamoli's observation that human behavior is largely driven by the quest for sensuality and a mate is a testament to this. By stepping back from these deeply rooted desires, one can gain a clearer perspective on life's true priorities. Now consider the tale of Diogenes the Cynic, a contemporary of the Stoics. Diogenes, known for his ascetic lifestyle, often challenged societal norms. His choice to live minimally, without the pursuit of physical pleasures, including sex, allowed him to focus on philosophical inquiry and personal growth. This mirrors the Stoic principle of focusing on what truly matters, the development of virtue and wisdom. In a modern context, this approach can be incredibly liberating. The constant pursuit of romantic and sexual fulfillment often leads to a cycle of desire and disappointment clouding our judgment and hindering our personal growth. By adopting a stoic mindset, we can redirect our energies towards self-improvement, cultivating virtues like wisdom, courage, and temperance. In our journey through life, many of us center our existence around the pursuit of romantic and sensual fulfillment, striving to be as alluring as possible to those we desire. This quest often drives us to enhance our appearance, whether it be through developing a toned physique, utilizing beauty products or donning fashionable attire. Nyanamoli, a profound thinker, 
sheds light on an alternative path. Celibacy. Embracing celibacy, he suggests, diminishes the influence of our sexual desires, thereby liberating us from the pursuit of social status or physical attractiveness solely for the sake of attracting a partner. This principle, he argues, applies universally. If we relinquish the need for lavish possessions or societal acclaim, we no longer feel compelled to exhaust ourselves in their pursuit. By choosing not to desire something, we can redirect immense amounts of energy towards other endeavors. Take, for instance, the Jesuits, a Christian order. They view celibacy not as a form of repression, but as a voluntary, conscious decision driven by a deep yearning for spiritual connection. This choice allows them to devote their entire being to fostering a relationship with the divine. However, the pursuit of celibacy isn't confined to religious contexts alone. It can also unlock potential for various secular pursuits, offering a unique freedom to explore and invest in other aspects of life. As we contemplate this perspective, let's consider the words of the Stoic philosopher Seneca. True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This sentiment resonates with the concept of celibacy as a means to reclaim control over our desires and energies. By focusing on the present and freeing ourselves from the relentless pursuit of sensual pleasures, we can find a deeper sense of fulfillment and purpose. Imagine the possibilities that open up when we're no longer tethered to the societal expectations of attractiveness and romantic conquests. The energy and time once spent on these pursuits can be channeled into personal growth, intellectual endeavors, or nurturing platonic relationships. This isn't to say that romance and physical attraction are inherently negative, but rather by understanding and sometimes stepping away from these desires, we can gain a clearer perspective on what truly enriches our lives. In essence, the choice of celibacy, as highlighted by Nyanamoli and practiced by the Jesuits, isn't merely about abstaining from sexual activity, it's a profound journey toward self discovery, a reclamation of personal power and a redirection of energy towards pursuits that offer deeper, more enduring forms of fulfillment. In conclusion, while the idea of abstaining from sex might seem daunting, it offers a pathway to a richer, more fulfilling life. This stoic practice encourages us to look inward, fostering a deeper understanding of ourselves and our place in the world. As we navigate the complexities of modern life, let this be a reminder to focus on what truly enriches our souls leading to a serene and resilient spirit. This is not a call for universal celibacy, but an invitation to reflect on our priorities and consider how our choices align with our deepest values. By doing so, we can lead lives of greater purpose and fulfillment. Alleged sexual transmutation. We encounter the intriguing concept of sexual transmutation, a principle not unfamiliar to the likes of the Serbian-American inventor Nikola Tesla. In the annals of his life, Tesla, though admired by many women, consciously chose a celibate path. Some have speculated about his orientation, but attributing it solely to sexual preference misses the deeper stoic perspective. For Tesla, life was more than the pursuit of carnal desires. It was about self-discipline and channeling one's energies toward a higher purpose. Tesla's celibacy was not a mere renunciation of physical intimacy. It was a deliberate exercise in self-control. Formerly a womanizer and gambler, he recognized the potential distraction of romantic entanglements, especially for those with intense, passionate natures, like inventors. In his view, artists, musicians, and writers might find inspiration in love, but an inventor, driven by a wild and passionate quality, risked losing focus and dedication to their craft if entangled in romantic relationships. When questioned about his stance on marriage, Tesla emphatically stated that it was suitable for artists, musicians, and writers, but not for inventors. He asserted that the latter's intense nature could lead to giving everything in a romantic relationship, potentially detracting from the single-minded dedication required for groundbreaking inventions. In his words, I do not think you can name many great inventions that have been made by married men. Yet Tesla's celibacy wasn't solely about avoiding distractions. He believed that abstinence played a pivotal role in enhancing his creativity. 
in what he referred to as sexual transmutation, Tesla harnessed his sexual energy and redirected it into the realm of creative inspiration. By abstaining from physical relationships, he claimed to have unlocked a wellspring of creative energy, further propelling him into the realms of innovation and invention. Understanding the intricacies of Tesla's stoic choices, we glimpse into the modern relevance of these principles. In a world often fixated on immediate gratification and sensory pleasures, embracing the stoic practice of self-discipline and focusing on a higher purpose can lead to profound personal growth. The stoic journey encourages us to navigate the complexities of modern life with a serene mind, emphasizing the importance of channeling our energies toward meaningful pursuits. Just as Tesla found strength in celibacy, we are urged to reflect on our own distractions and consider the potential benefits of redirecting our energies towards endeavors that contribute positively to our personal and collective well-being. Tesla's celibacy was not merely a personal choice. It was a stoic testament to the power of self-discipline and the transformative potential of redirecting energies towards creative pursuits. Navigating the intricate landscape of sexual transmutation, a concept veiled in controversy, we delve into its uncertain role in the life of visionaries like Tesla and the realms of Indian religions and Taoist practices. While scientific backing may elude the idea of channeling energy through abstinence, a myriad of anecdotes illuminate its potential benefits. The NoFap movement has garnered attention, with men and women to a lesser extent reporting superpowers after abstaining from self-pleasure. Legendary boxer Muhammad Ali attributed his unbeatable prowess to abstaining from sex before a big fight. Lady Gaga embraced celibacy in 2010, attributing it to safeguarding her creativity. American philosopher Henry David Thoreau in his work Walden hailed chastity as the flowering of man, suggesting the ability to transmute sensuality into purity and devotion. Thoreau spoke of the generative energy dissipated through the act, emphasizing that chastity could yield fruits such as genius, heroism, and holiness. Whether sexual transmutation is a myth or not, the prospect of valuable benefits emerges, providing yet another reason to consider a hiatus from intimate encounters. Stepping back from sexual activities could indeed be a blessing for those willing to take the plunge. However, acknowledging human nature's course, the allure of the birds and the bees on life stage remains potent. The perpetual question arises, how can our species endure without it? Not to mention the undeniable pleasure it brings. In the intricate tapestry of this contemplation, the wisdom of Buddhist monk Ajahn Yanamoli emerges. Despite recognizing the benefits, he acknowledges the formidable challenge of celibacy, stating that, for most, it's way too hard. This echoes a fundamental truth about human nature, recognizing the complexities and inherent difficulties in embracing celibacy outside certain religious practices. As we reflect on these diverse perspectives and stories, it becomes evident that the journey of sexual transmutation is nuanced and subjective. Perhaps in the realm of personal growth, each individual must discern the path that aligns with their values and aspirations. The narratives of Tesla, Ali, Gaga, and Thoreau offer glimpses into the multifaceted nature of this journey, where abstinence becomes a canvas for self-discovery and the potential for heightened creativity and vitality. In conclusion, the exploration of sexual transmutation invites us to consider the profound effects of abstaining from sexual activities. While the scientific community may grapple with the concept's validation, the stories and philosophies presented here highlight its potential benefits. The choice to abstain is a deeply personal one, intertwined with individual beliefs, aspirations, and the recognition of the challenges posed by human nature. Ultimately, it prompts us to reflect on our own paths, recognizing the intricate interplay between desire, creativity, and the pursuit of a flourishing life. The less you scratch, the less it itches. Uh, the less you scratch an itch, the less it bothers you. This analogy beautifully encapsulates the essence of our discussion today. Sensual desires, including the yearning for sexual gratification, are akin to an itch demanding to be scratched. 
We can choose to satisfy this urge through physical intimacy, or we might adopt an approach similar to the philosopher Diogenes, who famously addressed his desires in unconventional ways. However, the more we indulge in these desires, the more persistent and demanding they become. This concept isn't unique to Stoicism. Buddha, in his profound understanding of the human mind, observed how desires operate and how we can liberate ourselves from their grip. To truly comprehend this, we must first recognize what the Z-Desiris arise. From a Buddhist perspective, engaging in sensual pleasures is often an attempt to escape a deep-seated dissatisfaction with life. While it's natural to seek sensual pleasures, there's a danger in misusing them as a means to numb our pain. In doing so, these desires intensify, potentially leading to addiction. This is when simple pleasures, like eating or browsing the internet, transform into compulsive behaviors. Thus, the more we indulge, the stronger the urge becomes. Temporary relief might be found in satisfying these desires, but like an itch, they return with greater intensity. This is especially true with sexual desires. Many who believe they have a healthy sex life may actually be under the constant influence of their cravings. They might have steady partners to satisfy these urges, which only serves to perpetuate the cycle. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, once said, Slavery resides under marble and gold. This statement resonates deeply with our topic. Often what we perceive as freedom the ability to indulge in our desires, is actually a form of bondage. We become slaves to our cravings, trapped in a cycle of temporary satisfaction and persistent longing. As Stoics, we strive for tranquility and mastery over our desires. By understanding and controlling our urges, we can achieve a state of inner peace and resilience. This doesn't mean we should completely abstain from pleasure, but rather, we should seek a balanced life where Pleasure is not the master, but one of many aspects of a fulfilling existence. In the profound words of the Stoic philosopher Seneca, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. This sentiment echoes through the teachings of Buddhist monk Ajahn Yanamoli, who advocates for celibacy not just as a religious practice, but as a means to liberate the mind from the shackles of desire. His perspective offers a unique lens through which men, particularly those aged 30 to 65, can view their relationship with sexual desires in the pursuit of a celibate life. Ajahn Yanamoli suggests that the average person's life is predominantly driven by the pursuit of desires, most of which are rooted in sensuality. This relentless chase, often centered around finding a mate and building a family, is likened to a cycle of itching and scratching. The more we itch, desire, the more we feel compelled to scratch, satisfy the desire. He posits that celibacy is not merely an act of denial, but an opportunity to cultivate wisdom. By consciously choosing not to indulge in sensual desires, one can gain a deeper understanding and control over them. This process, akin to seeing desire by not giving in to desire, can lead to overcoming these desires altogether. The freedom experienced by the mind then is profound and unparalleled. In modern life where sensuality and the pursuit of pleasure are often glorified, choosing celibacy can seem counterintuitive. However, it's essential to consider the benefits of such a choice. The less we engage in the cycle of desire and gratification, the less we are controlled by it. This detachment does not mean a life devoid of joy, but rather a life where joy is not contingent on external factors. It's about finding contentment and peace within oneself, rather than seeking it in transient pleasures. For men who often face societal pressures and personal expectations regarding sexuality, this perspective can be particularly liberating. It's an invitation to reevaluate the role of sexual desires in their lives and to consider the tranquility that might come from stepping away from the incessant need to satisfy these desires. This approach aligns with the Stoic principle of focusing on what is within our control, our thoughts and actions, rather than being at the mercy of external desires. In conclusion, embracing celibacy as suggested by Ajahn Yanamoli is not about suppressing or denying one's natural desires. Instead, it's about understanding these desires their roots, and their impact 
on our lives. It's a journey towards inner freedom, where one is not dictated by sensual urges but is guided by wisdom and self-control. As we navigate through the complexities of modern life, this perspective offers a refreshing and empowering alternative to the conventional narrative surrounding sexuality and pleasure. The Stoic approach to sexual desires is not about suppression, but about understanding and managing them. It's about recognizing that true satisfaction comes not from external pleasures, but from inner peace and self-control. By adopting this mindset, we can navigate life with a serene mind and a resilient spirit, true to the principles of Stoicism and the teachings of philosophers like Seneca. Let's embrace this wisdom and apply it to our lives, finding balance and tranquility in the midst of our modern hustle. The sacrifice may not be worth it. In the realm of Stoicism, where the pursuit of virtue and rational living is paramount, the question of whether to engage in sexual activities, especially outside the sanctity of a relationship or marriage, becomes a subject of profound contemplation. The Stoic philosophers who revered wisdom and self-control might argue that the sacrifice involved in seeking sexual pleasure may not always be worth its fleeting gratification. The single individual navigating the modern dating landscape where the quest for a compatible partner often leads to physical venues or the digital corridors of dating apps and websites. This pursuit, while sometimes fruitful, is frequently fraught with challenges and disappointments. The Stoic philosopher Seneca once said, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. This is particularly true in the realm of dating, where the anticipation and pursuit of a physical connection can be laden with anxiety and unmet expectations. Even when one finds a seemingly suitable partner, the complexities of human chemistry and the unpredictability of interpersonal dynamics can lead to a lack of connection or worse encounters with individuals whose intentions may be harmful. The stoic practice of caution and discernment becomes crucial in these scenarios. Moreover, the option of exchanging money for physical pleasure raises ethical and philosophical questions. One must consider not only the personal cost but also the circumstances and motivations of those engaged in such transactions. In the Stoic view, the pursuit of physical pleasure, particularly when it involves significant risk, expense, or ethical dilemmas, is often at odds with the pursuit of a virtuous and rational life. The Stoics believed in living in harmony with nature, and in this context, nature refers not just to the physical world but also to one's inner nature the rational, discerning aspect of the human psyche. As Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic emperor, advised, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. In the context of modern relationships and sexual encounters, this could be interpreted as choosing a path that is thoughtful, respectful, and in alignment with one's values, rather than succumbing to the Beiser instincts and societal pressures. Over 2,000 years ago, the philosopher Epicurus, renowned for his moral philosophy that centered around the pursuit of pleasure, offered a unique perspective on this matter. He viewed sexual intercourse not as a necessity for achieving happiness and contentment, the ultimate goals of his Epicurean philosophy. Instead, he saw it as a natural desire that, while inherent, was not essential for a fulfilling life. Epicurus boldly posited that sexual activity was inherently non-beneficial, suggesting that one is fortunate if it does not result in harm. This viewpoint, though controversial, finds echoes in modern research. Numerous studies have drawn a connection between frequent casual sexual encounters, often referred to as hookups and deteriorating mental health. However, the direction of this relationship remains ambiguous. Does poor mental health lead to an increased likelihood of engaging in casual sex? Or does the act itself contribute to mental distress? The International Academy of Sex Research weighs in on this debate, highlighting the risks associated with sexual behavior, including unintended pregnancies, sexually transmitted infections, STIs, and the threat of sexual assault. The decision to embrace or avoid these potential risks and sacrifices ultimately rests with the individual. Yet there exists a simpler, perhaps more pragmatic approach 
to addressing our innate desires as suggested by the philosopher Diogenes. His philosophy offers an alternative path, one that emphasizes self-sufficiency and the mastery of desires rather than their indulgence. Stoicism teaches the value of self-control and the importance of making choices that align with our inner virtues and long-term well-being. It encourages us to question the nature of our desires and to consider whether fulfilling them truly serves our higher purpose. In this light, the decision to engage in or abstain from sexual activity becomes a reflection of our commitment to living a life guided by reason and virtue. Imagine a Stoic philosopher confronted with the allure of a romantic encounter. Rather than succumbing to immediate gratification, he pauses to reflect on the potential consequences of his actions, the emotional entanglements, the risk to his mental and physical health, and the distraction from his philosophical pursuits. In this moment of introspection, he finds clarity and chooses a path that aligns with his stoic principles, opting for a life of simplicity and self-discipline. For the modern audience, this narrative serves as a powerful reminder of the stoic ideals. It encourages us to look beyond the fleeting pleasures of the moment and to consider the broader impact of our choices on our lives. As we navigate the complexities of relationships and intimacy, we are invited to apply the wisdom of Stoicism, balancing our desires with a thoughtful consideration of their long-term effects. In conclusion, while the Stoic philosophy does not outright condemn sexual activities, it encourages a thoughtful and discerning approach to them. It suggests that one should weigh the potential risks and ethical implications against the fleeting nature of physical pleasure. In doing so, it aligns with the Stoic pursuit of a life led by virtue, wisdom, and rational thought, reminding us that sometimes the greatest pleasures are found not in the physical realm, but in the peace and serenity of a well-considered life. As we conclude our exploration of six reasons not to have sex here on Stoic in Your Life, I hope this journey has offered you a fresh perspective on a topic that is often shrouded in misconceptions and societal pressures. Our discussion today was not about advocating for a specific lifestyle of choice, care, but rather about providing insights into the Stoic philosophy and how it can apply to our understanding of sexuality and personal choices. Remember, the essence of Stoicism is about living in harmony with our inner virtues, making rational decisions and understanding the nature of our desires. Whether you choose to embrace celibacy or not, the key takeaway is to approach your decisions with mindfulness, considering the long-term impact on your well-being and personal growth. If you found this discussion enlightening and thought-provoking, I encourage you to engage further with our content. Please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to Stoic in Your Life for more insightful discussions. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you won't miss our upcoming videos where we'll continue to delve into topics that challenge our preconceptions and offer new perspectives on living a fulfilling life. Thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to continuing this journey with you. Remember, in the words of Seneca, true happiness is to enjoy the present, without anxious dependence upon the future. Let's strive to live a life guided by reason, virtue, and inner peace. Until next time, stay stoic in your life.